often start on the back because the floor is such a great feedback. It can give us information about our movement. And we start with the very, very basic movement that many of you might know. It's the pelvic rock movement on the back, but it's like, it's like magical movement for me. Um, and it's a very foundational movement in somatics. So we're going to just lie down. You might want to have a little bit of a check that you have some space around you so that you can spread your arms. There's going to be a little bit of optional rolling from side to side. So if you, if you have space, that's great. If you don't, there's always workarounds. And then what we start with is just a kind of a short body scan or a short moment of tuning in. We want to notice what is our state when we start? So you might want to keep your feet on the mat or legs straight, find a, just a comfortable place for the arms. Often I just wiggle around a little bit as if I want to leave my imprint onto the ground. And we just take a couple of breaths of noticing. So morning time, what can you sense in your physical body? What's lingering? what's already kind of creeping up into your mind, uh, what, how, is, um, how is the thought process, is it quite spacious up there, or are there thoughts kind of looping around, maybe checking in with your breath. So I'll give you a couple of more moments here to just feel what are you coming into your practice with? What's in the foreground? And then the starting movement will be with the feet on the mat, with your knees more or less hip distance apart, doesn't have to be so precise. You could take your hands onto your kind of hip bones or your lower belly so you can feel this movement where we press the lower back onto the ground. You feel your pelvis tilting, your pubic bone kind of lifts a little bit. Maybe the tailbone comes off the ground just a tiny bit, but otherwise your lower back is pressing onto the ground. And then you're going to arch the lower back away from the ground. So that's when the, t uh, pel uh, the pubic bone is going to move between your feet and the lower back is kind of contracting. And so you can do that movement to the rhythm of your breath. So on the inhale, the lower back arches away and the front body gets broad and the lower back contracts. And then on the exhale, you're gonna press the lower back onto the ground. As you empty your breath, you might also feel the deep core muscles engaging. And then as we move like this, let's prioritize like the smoothness of the movement. So we're going to keep it really kind of soft. And as I said, a big key element of the somatic soma, meaning the body, but the body that you can sense internally. So it's the felt sense, your first hand experience of your body. So you just want to kind of feel what are the sensations that the movements create. And then we want to keep them kind of easeful and smooth. And then you could stay with this or you could bring your hands and interlock them behind your head so we can add a little bit of upper body movement to it. So when you are starting to flatten the lower back towards the ground, the elbows can lift up towards the ceiling and you can uh, curl upward away from the ground, upper back. So the whole front line shortens. And then when you're coming to the inhaling part and the lower back is arching, the backs of the elbows can come onto the mat open wide and even press the backs of the hands onto the ground. That's your inhale. So a couple of rounds like this. And you're going to move at your own rhythm so you're not following mine. You're feeling the inhale, front body broadens. And then the exhale, when the front body shortens, try to feel that this broadness along the back body. And so we're getting this movement synchronized with breath. A couple of more rounds, just one or two more rounds. Soften your jaw. Relaxing the eyes, whether they are open or closed. 
And then next time when you're starting to come back towards the ground, you could release the hands and open them wide to the sides and just let your lower back kind of find uh, an in-between spot. So neither are you pressing, neither are you arching. Take a breath in, relax the arms onto the ground, take a breath out, notice what you can notice. Maybe just sensing the parts of the body that are connecting to the ground. So we're also going to be taking these little moments of pause. And then I want to find a bit of a rotational movement. So bringing that in, this one was moving back and forth on a sagittal plane. So I'm going to walk my feet a little bit wider. So they might even come off your yoga mat. You can experiment with the different width. And we're going to come into what we call the windshield wiper movement. So the, at first, the knees are just lazily going to start to drop from side to side. So your pelvis is going to drop as well. Your pelvis is going to pivot. And then what I'm going to offer you is a breathing pattern of dropping the knees on the inhale and coming back to the center on the exhale. And then slowly, I'll start adding to this movement and then know that you can always stay with the very basics. At first, it's just like as effortless. It's just thighs getting a little bit heavy and drawn down by gravity. And then as your knees drop to the side, let your head lazily roll to the opposite side where the knees are dropping. Maybe even part your teeth a little bit, but keep breathing in and out through the nose. So just to make sure that everything around the neck and the jaw stays really relaxed. So now there's like this little craniosacral rhythm that we're creating, centering on the inhale, sorry, on the exhale and dropping the knees on the inhale. And then the little like movement that I'm going to add in a moment, again, is just intentionally bringing in a little bit more kind of intensity or a little bit more tension. So next time when the knees are going to drop over to your right side, pause and feel the top leg, the left leg, especially the left knee, begin to reach the left knee without anything else changing. Begin to reach the left knee towards the foot end of your mat. So your left side of your pelvis is going to lift a little bit more off the mat. So you're going to be, pelvis is going to be tilting to the right a little bit more. So you might feel it along the side body on that left side, your waistline, maybe the lower back, and maybe also in front of that left hip where we have kind of that hip flexors and psoas muscle. This is your inhale and then releasing that action, returning the knees, and then doing the same on the opposite side, but with the right knee reaching. So I'm creating a little bit more reach through the side body, like a, like a morning yawn or like a cat stretching. So again, still not pushing or forcing anything. The head could stay rolling to the opposite side of, th of the knees. And uh, again, experiment making that reaching action on the inhale. And then lastly, if it doesn't feel too much, when the knees drop to the right, when the left knee reaches, maybe the left arm reaches the opposite direction, so it starts to slide upward. So you're creating again this side body lengthening, and then on the exhale, returning. And so explore this windshield viper movement with these different add-ons. Maybe now you're also going to finding it interesting to linger in that side reach for a moment for a couple of breaths. I'm never holding my breath, but I am sometimes liking to like to stay in that expansion movement for a breath. And then I'll go one more time to each side. So you can now start to see how it's, yeah, it's like a lazy morning, morning stretch to prepare the body. And you remember a lot of attention to what you're doing. And the next time when you're at the center, we're going to take again a little pause. So you could slide your legs straight or you could drop the knees against each other so that your, your thighs are supported. And for a moment again, we come back to sensing, sensing, feeling, 
You could start by feeling the parts that are connected to the ground or anything else that you can sense that kind of um, is, is, is giving you some signals, a certain part of the body, a certain thought, everything is allowed in. Again, soften your jaw, relax the tongue and the mouth. This practice works together with your nervous system. So these moments of noticing, but also finding more ease and softness is part of it. And then we'll come back to the similar windshield wiper movement, but I'm going to mix it around a little bit. And here's where a little bit of play comes in. You can take that option or you can leave it. So instead of the arms being out open to the sides, if it works for your shoulders, bring the arms slightly upward, so like a V shape. They don't, they're not right next to your ears, but they're a little bit open to the sides. And when we start to drop the knees from side to side, this time turn the head to the side where the knees are dropping. So we'll start with that. The knees are going to go from side to side slowly. The head is going to roll to the same side with the knees. I still like to drop the knees on the inhale. None of it is a rule, but you can, you can try both ways. And then next time when your knees drop to the right, pause for a moment. And as the knees are on the right, let's feel your left hand, left arm, left fingertips. Begin to reach the left fingertips upward, away from the body, and then to circle them over your head towards your right. So your whole body curls over to the right. My knees have stayed how they are. My feet have stayed where they are. It's the left hand that has initiated the movement. And then it's going to initiate the movement back. So it's going to reach upward, make a circle over my head, and then the knees are going to lift, the pelvis is going to roll back. And then we're going to do the same to the right side. So the knees are going to drop, the right fingertips are going to reach upward, make a circle around, you're going to curl over onto your left side, and then the right fingertips are going to reach upward make a circle. Notice your upper body turns first, then the spine, then the pelvis, then the knees. See if you could now roll from side to side like this. One arm, the uh, kn when knees drop to the right, it's the left hand that initiates the movement, curls you over. I want you to find your own pace with this, little pause at the center. And then here's the play part. So what if I'm going to use this rolling movement to experiment coming towards seated? So next time, when I'm rolling, let's say, over to my left side, I'm going to use my right hand, press it down, and curl up to seated. And then let the gravity draw me down. And the same movement is going to curl me to the opposite side. Play with this a little bit make it soft and if you don't like it if it doesn't work with your mood or what's going on for you right now then stay with the uh, rolling on the back i'm going to do a few more like this i'm going to play with how can i soften myself to ground and then rise from the ground as effortlessly as possible and then eventually we're going to come upright. So choosing a side, and you're going to end up seated. So if you stayed on the ground, just choose one side, roll to that side, and here you are. When you seat it, take yourself, sit with the hands leaned back behind you, keep the feet on the mat, and then let's come back to the windshield wiper movement from here. So the knees are going to be dropping from side to side, exactly what we did on the back but we're going to do it from seated. You could have the head turned to one side, uh, to the opposite of the knees. So we'll go a few more. Good. And then I'll meet you on the right side. 
again, I'll mix it up a little bit. So the knees have dropped to the right. You know how we before we lifted both knees at the same time. Now I want to, to initiate the upward coming and changing side by the left knee lifting first. So the left knee is going to lift. And you're going to feel where is the end of that movement. So at first my pelvis doesn't move. When you feel like, okay, it can't comfortably go any further, then I'm going to allow the pelvis to move and both thighs to shift sides. And on the other side, it's the right knee. So I'm moving slowly enough, so I'm really feeling my hip socket, the movement. This is called external rotation in the hip. And then you're changing into internal rotation. So go like this a few times. Slowly enough, you can change the width of the legs. There's no precision in that. And we're always staying with the comfortable range. So I'm not going to any pinching sensation. I'm not forcing anything. When, when I feel like there's a natural kind of stickiness, I'm stuck, then I'm going to release the pelvis and allow the kinetic chain to move the knees from side to side. And so one more. I think of these movements often like oiling my joints. <laughs> so I'm giving my hip joints in this case the stimulation of Okay, what's the range in the external rotation? And then we're taking it also into an internal rotation. And maybe one more. Perfect. And then I'll meet you when both knees are upward, feet are down. I'm going to face towards the front end of your mat. And then if you can, Starting to find coming into a squat pose from here. If you can't, you can also swing your legs over to one side and come into it that way. So I'm going to press my hands behind my back and I'm going to walk myself between the heels. If you need to, you might want to place something under your heels. If you have a block, you could be even sitting on top of a block. And then bringing the hands in front of your chest. And we're going to press first the hands together, elbows against the knees, knees against the elbows, as if you want to try to make a back bend here, lifting the chest, breathing in, let the breath move all the way down so you feel kind of as if there's a widening in the pelvic floor. And then when we exhale, we're going to let go of that. You reach the hands kind of forward, the palms might stay together, chin comes to your chest and you're going to make the back body broad. I like to actually breathe in here as well into the back of the lungs so we don't have to do it to the breath. And do that twice more at your own pace. So experiment with as if you want to get the front body really broad and more engagement through the hips. And how does that feel? More muscular? And then letting the muscular action go finding length in the back body, maybe even sending your breath to the back body. And yes, if your ankles complain with the squat, then place a blanket under your heels. And if it starts to feel too much, maybe consider placing a block under your bum. And the next time when your fingertips are reaching down towards the ground, keep them there and begin to slowly lift your hips. At one point you might toe heel your feet a little bit closer together, but they still can stay hip distance. You can keep your knees however bent you need in order to not overly feel tension through the back line of the body. And then see how much you can just let your head tangle, maybe a little shimmy through the shoulder. So this is again personal. What makes it more easeful here? Do you want to just kind of be more still or do you want to find micro movements in your ribs? Maybe bending and straightening the knees a few times but that you don't need to straighten them all the way. So the way I like to do it, I straighten them just to a point where I start to feel more kind of stretchy sensation through the backs of the legs and then I let go. So it's like a little good morning to the back line, to your hamstrings and then softening. Couple of more breaths here in the forward fold. <sighs> And then let's see what it's like to start to come more upward, to rise upward to standing. So soft knees, you're going to press down through the feet and keeping the upper body tangling using the 
power of your legs to start to unravel the spine curls upward curls upward you take again your own pace with this when you're up and standing maybe again just some intuitive movement to feel how it feels to be upright maybe the shoulders want to move maybe the hips want to wiggle find your feet plant them firmly onto the ground you might want to come to the toes and the heels a few times and then soften the knees bring your hands onto your lower belly and let's find the pelvic rock movement from here so the knees need to be soft you don't gonna, you're not going to be have too much access otherwise into this movement and so get the lower back really broad and let the tailbone sink down towards the ground and then let your tailbone lift your belly protrudes forward and there's a uh, like a condensing in the lower back so the same movement that we did on the ground we're going to find it here and the breath can be also inhaling when the tail lifts exhaling when it turns down towards the ground and here too how smooth can I make it so part of the things that we could have play with in the somatics in the in the future classes as well is the smoothness of the movement and so if there's jerkiness or shakiness just kind of maybe doing a little bit less so finding the ease and then we can add the upper body so when the tailbone lifts you can draw the arms down like cactus arms and then when the tailbone curls you draw the arms forward you're not folding forward but just the elbows down towards the belly button so you feel that your upper back gets broad so inhale exhale front body broad back body broad again soft smooth movements you're giving your muscle muscles and your fascia this different stimulation this is what lengthened position feels like this is what shortened position feels like with a lot of mental focus noticing the sensory information that is there and so that can start to change um, some of the like the chronic holding patterns that we may hold in our tissues and we'll go just a couple of more rounds with that beautiful and then letting the arms lower taking a breath feeling into your stance and then bringing some of these movements into a flow so we're gonna rise up on the inhale arms lift coming into a forward fold on the exhale and then fingertips on the ground knees however bent you need let your right leg move to the back of the mat Take your back knee down to the ground and let's come up to um, kneeling lunge from here so you're going to come up and at first move yourself a little bit back so you are on top of that right knee and curl the tailbone down here and I like to keep my hands kind of just feeling this so the tailbone curls down you feel the lower back broadens and then here you might feel it in front of that right hip take a breath in and then as I start to bring the hips slightly forward notice how I start to lose you start to lose that movement of tailbone curled in so your pelvis actually the lower back starts to arch maybe you bring your right arm up to emphasize that there's this connection from the lower body to the upper body so I'm in a bit of a back bend but the pelvis has done the same movement tilting forward and back and then again let yourself come a little bit further back maybe draw the elbow downward kind of towards the belly button a little bit so you feel the upper back broad as well my hand is on the lower back so I'm really connecting to that movement flattening of the lower back and then as the hips come forward I don't need to let them drop all the way forward I press that left foot slightly down to control my movement and so pulse like this a few more times going back letting yourself come slightly forward into a kneeling lunge here one more and 
and then slower the hands down. Tuck the back toes under, lift the back knee up, pause here for a moment. And just to give our body a little bit of a different stimulus, let's come to a twist where the left hand comes up. Take a breath. If you've been looking up, turn your head down towards the bottom hand. And then as if you're turning a light bulb or a doorknob, move that upper hand. So just bringing in that rotational stimulation now into that left shoulder. Just a couple of more rounds. Turn the thumb towards the foot end and then rotate it the other way. One more breath. And then lower the left hand down onto the ground. Step momentarily the downward facing dog shape, our first one. Give it a breath. Notice again if you want to soften your knees, if you want to wiggle here a little bit. And then let's take this one into a flow. So soften the knees down onto the ground. And then take the bum back towards the heels. Keep the arms forward. Then come up to all fours with a rounded back on the inhale. Lift your chest, lift your sit bones. So the cow pose, tuck the toes at the same time. And then continue that exhale as you move to downward facing dog. A couple of breaths here again, either more steady or adding a bit, wee bit of a wiggle. And then do that one more time. Slowly soften the knees down onto the ground. Untuck the toes, take the bum back towards the heels. Give it a moment where everything softens in the child's pose, including your palms, your shoulders, your elbows. And then begin with the inhale with a really rounded back to curl up to all fours. Lift your chest, lift your sit bones, tuck your toes, exhale, downward facing dog. Again, a moment here. And then from downward facing dog, begin to walk your feet forward to the top of the mat. When you're at the top, feet can stay hip distance. Soften again into a like a soft forward fold, but then you could bring your hands onto your lower knees and then straighten the knees, straighten the arms, come halfway up, take a breath in. And then exhale, fold again, consider again to softening the knees to a point where there's not too much intensity back on the back line. Draw the chin to your chest. Do that twice more with your own breath rhythm. Pulse into folding. Pulsing into folding. And then soften the fingertips down. Once you've done the three rounds, take your left leg to the back of the mat. So the same little lunge exploration on this side, right foot is forward. We're going to come into a kneeling lunge, backing off a little bit, and then feeling that movement of what it creates, also how it the lower back movement is connected to the hip and the sensation in front of the hip, tailbone down. And then starting to come into a lunge where you let yourself find just the right amount of back bend. The arm can go up, left arm can go up. I'm moving back, tucking tailbone, and I'm adding that little curl of that right el left elbow, sorry, towards the belly button. Again, move slowly enough so that you can start to feel into some of the nuance. And if your left knee complains, you need to put a blanket underneath it. I'll go a couple of more times. Beautiful. At one point, we're going to lower the hands down onto the ground, tucking the back toes under lifting the back knee up and then we're adding a twist so i'm gonna let your you find the movement of the right arm upward if it starts to feel too much the back knee can also be down on the ground then i'm gonna take my gaze down and then i'm gonna rotate so that's the internal external rotation in that right shoulder so turning turning the doorknob Again, move slowly enough. 
So you can feel that movement in the hip socket, so your full attention is there. Give it another turn to the right, to the left, or forward and back, and then take the right arm to the inside. Now this time, instead of stepping back, walk your hands over towards the center of the both legs. So you come to a wide-legged forward fold. I'm just going to shuffle around. Take your hands under your shoulders. Your toes are going to point towards the long end of the mat. And then slowly begin to bend into your right knee. So the hips are going to shift over towards the right, as if you're doing a squat on the right side. And then ground the left foot really firmly into the ground so you feel the inner thigh on the left side. And then slowly switch. So move and you might walking, you might walk your hands over there as well. So as you go from side to side, you could choose to straighten and then bend so your hips come up. Or you could imagine like you're under a low table and you need to glide from side to side rather than straightening one knee. Yeah, you're gliding from side to side. Excellent. A couple of more rounds with this. Pause on the right side for a moment. Give it a breath, ground both feet. And then walk over to the left and pause on the left. Ground, soften eyes, feel what you can feel. Going only to a depth that there's maybe a wee bit of a challenge, but not too much. And then come back through the center Either keep your hands underneath your shoulders or add a forward fold where the fingertips come a little bit further back in line with the toes. Your knees can stay soft. The head releases downward. You feel into your body weight, so you're neither too far back on the heels, neither are you too far forward on the toes. So you might even lean forward and back, so you get that kind of sensory feedback from there about your position in space. And then once more, concentrate on what can soften here. So can your jaw relax a little bit? Feel the breath moving in and out through the nose. Give it another breath in. Give it another breath out. Perfect. Walk your hands back under your shoulders. Walk them around the front foot, which I believe is your right foot. So you're facing back forward. We're going to step back to downward facing dog one more time. Again, a little moment for you to do here what your body wishes. So stillness, wiggles, little explorations. And then either we're going to come onto the belly for a back bend. So you could either soften your knees down and add some cat and cow on all fours. If you feel a little bit more dynamic this morning, then come to plank pose and pause there for a couple of breaths. So you're going to broaden your upper back. You're going to find the tone in your legs. Your head is, crown of the head is reaching forward. Heels are reaching backward. Just a moment, just how does this heat feel like in your body? And if today that feels too much, then knees down and add some more fluid movements for the spine. Give it another breath. And then I'm going to soften my knees down on the way down. If you feel super strong, you could keep them up. And I'm going to do a slow lowering. So I'm going to press the hands down as if I want to resist going down. And I go slowly, slowly, slowly. And then I take a little pause moment. Hands come underneath the forehead, legs flop. I receive the feedback again from the ground. Like what does my breath feel like from this perspective as I feel the ribs? How much can I let my bones sink into the ground here? Give it one more breath in. Give it one more breath out. And then bring the hands so that they are underneath your shoulders, but keep them hovering above the ground. They don't have to be exactly underneath the shoulders. So we're going to first lift up with our 
back muscles. So I'm not using my arms, kind of a version of a locust pose. At first, feel the tops of the feet on the ground and feel your back body. Give it a moment, feel what's contracting and then slowly lower, exhale. Let everything soften, keep the hands there. We're gonna come one more time. Now focus on the breath, lift and let the inhale lift you. So you're gonna come to this mini, mini back bend that is using your back muscles to get here. Keep breathing when you're in the shape and then notice when you lift your legs up. If it's too much, keep them down. Feel that there's no um, over efforting in the lower back. You might want to feel into your bum, into the backs of the legs. Give it another breath. And then again, exhale lower. And can you let everything soften for a moment? So as much as we want to train the muscles to um, engage, we also want to train them what relaxation feels like. Now keep the feet planted for this one. Lift again, upper body, keep the arms hovering and then lower them down. Either stay here or add now a little bit of a lift by pressing the arms down. And your cobra is gonna look like whatever your lower back is telling you. So you're gonna just lift to a point where everything still feels spacious. There's again, no pinching. You take a breath, you can wiggle your shoulders a little bit so nothing feels super like stuck or static. You could experiment pressing the tops of the feet and your pubic bone down a little bit more, a little bit less. What changes when you change that intensity? Give it a one more breath in. Give it one more breath out. And then lower onto the ground. Press yourself up to all fours. Walk your hands so they're right under the shoulders. And then we're going to do the rounded cat pose, we're going to pause here and we're going to breathe into the back of the body, into the lungs, as if you want to breathe into your lower back. And then next time when you're exhaling, let the buttocks shift back towards the heels, forehead down onto the ground so you're coming into a child's pose. Give a breath in here, more focus again on relaxing everything, the wrist joints elbow joints, shoulder joints. And then one more breath where the focus goes into the back of the lungs, filling the back space and then emptying out. Let yourself come forward to all fours when you're ready. We're gonna swing the legs to one side so you can come to sit again, cross your left leg in front of your right leg. And you can sit either cross-legged you could experiment walking the heels a little bit further away from you and uh, from each other. So it's more like the shin bones across. So it just depends on your hip sockets, which one works for you. And I'm going to take my fingertips onto the ground. I'm just going to explore coming forward, feeling the hip joints, feeling the outer thighs. And then either more still here, finding a place where there's just enough stretchiness, or maybe adding a little bit of exploration. So what changes when I move a little bit over to one side? What changes if I move a little bit over to the other side? What changes if I lift one rib part of the rib cage, one side of the rib cage away from the ground? So the posture could be still, and there's a lot of investigation that I can do in stillness. See if you can sense what this morning, what is your preference? Sometimes when there's a lot of agitation in us, the movement can actually help to release that. Sometimes there is a natural stillness that we want to just savor. Give it another breath in. Give it another breath out. And if you don't know what you prefer, this is a really good place to investigate. So try something and start to learn what are your body's signals for, yes, I like this. No, I don't like this, or I'm neutral to this. And then once you 
feel complete in, on this side, switch the legs around and do the same investigation on the other side. And you know what? It doesn't have to be the same. This side might want a different thing, might want more stillness, less stillness. So you can start fresh. And so what I often emphasize is it's not even that the shape is that important. It is important, but it's more like how do I um, connect to the signals that are coming to my own kind of innerness? How do I respond? How aware can I be? So the aim really in when we add somatics to any practice, the aim is to become better at feeling to um, get more nuanced in the way we feel into our sensory uh, information, our sensory awareness, our capacity to um, feel detail. Give it another couple of breaths. And then let us slowly rise. Let the legs come forward for a moment and just bounce them on the ground a little bit. Then flop them in and out. And then either choose to come to the whole like five minutes that we have left to lying down or any resting position that is comfortable or coming into a seated meditation. So that's up to you how you want to finish again, maybe a little moment where you tune in. It's not what you should do, but what is it that I need right now? And see if you can trust that. And then I'll hold just a little bit of space here for you and offer also some silence for you. So if you see it, it's important that you can access that pelvic rock movement because a comfortable seat is somewhere where you need the flattening and need the arching. If you're on your back, you just need to feel comfortable. And then you can choose eyes closed or open. Again, comes down to what, what helps you settle best. I'll offer you a little guidance for the first minute or so. You can take it or you can leave it. Let yourself sense the ground underneath, wherever the body is meeting the earth, this larger body below you. Just linger there for a moment. Whether you're seated or lying down. And notice any shifts and changes in your breath or in your physiology when you simply imagine this larger body of earth holding your body that we are releasing and resourcing ourselves from something larger than us. And when we connect to the earthiness within us, we're connecting to our bones and flesh our physical body. So what is the feel of your physical body? How do you know that you have a body? Can you sense its boundaries? And then can you sense the depth within? So the spaciousness, the liveness.
And for the last moment, stay with whatever feels pleasant and easeful. Maybe it's a throbbing in the palm of your hand. Maybe it's a sound. A feel of your breath. Whatever feels pleasant and easeful that your mind can easily rest upon. And then if you've been on your back and you know that this was the time you had, what is the kindest way that you can begin to transition, feeling that there's no rush? Maybe that rocking movement that we tried, that rolling movement that we tried, or maybe something else. And then if you're already seated, you can just sense, is there a gesture that you want to finish with? So it might be something that you always use, like a little ritual at the end mar that marks an end of a practice, or it could be spontaneous in the moment. So it could be a bow, it could be a hand gesture. I want it to be yours. Could be palms together, hands somewhere connecting to a part of your body. This could be a good place to just let an intention, if it naturally arises, to ripple outward into your day, or simply this um, connection, deep in connection that you've created with yourself, knowing that that has a ripple effect outward towards anything and anyone you encounter. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining. I wish you a beautiful day and a beautiful week.